If you are familiar with how the Canadian provinces are laid out, and you saw my previous video, you're probably wondering how I got from Manitoba to Alberta so fast. After leaving Manitoba, we stayed two weeks in Saskatchewan at Moose Mountain Provincial Park. This was our first provincial park of the season, and we loved exploring the surrounding area. We had lots of fireside dinners, did some horseback riding, and flew some kites by the lake. Flying a kite is hard. I wasn't able to find some time to shoot a deep sky object at this location, but I was able to spend about 30 minutes or so pointing my 6SC telescope towards the full moon. We left on a Saturday for a one night stay in Swift Current before crossing the border into Alberta, heading towards the small town of Drumheller. Known for its surrounding badlands, hoodoo rock formations, and dinosaur bone exhibits. Lauren has family with some farmland about 30 minutes outside of town. They were kind enough to let us park our trailer on their property for the week. This is such a beautiful place. Lauren spent a lot of her childhood at this farm and loves coming back. All right, buddy. It holds a special place in her heart and I knew it would be the perfect place to ask her to marry me. She said yes. So now that we're all caught up, let's get to the astrophotography. I botched the intro footage that I originally took, so here's a summary of what I'm doing tonight. The plan is to shoot the Sol Nebula with my Raza 8-inch telescope and the ASI 294 MC Pro camera. This place is a Bortle 1 zone, so there should be no problem seeing the Milky Way painted across the night sky. Alright, let's get the night started. I'm going to do a star alignment and then uh, point my telescope towards the Sol Nebula. Before I start slewing my telescope, uh, let's go outside and take a look and make sure there's not going to be any cable snags uh, and everything else is ready to go. Alright, so it doesn't look like the telescope will hit anything when it slews. And I shouldn't have to worry too much about cables. There's only one touching the ground going into the eliminator. And uh, yeah, one cable going towards the mount from the top of the telescope. All right, I'm actually gonna leave the camera here and uh, go tell the telescope to slew, and then we'll see what happens. It wasn't long into the night when things started to become a bit more challenging. I was struggling and I couldn't get my telescope mount to orient itself in the night sky.
Alright, so I had a heck of a time trying to get set up for tonight. I wasn't successful in doing a star alignment, and uh, I'm not really sure why. Stellarium scope was throwing errors every time I tried to save the location of the star after moving the telescope to where it's supposed to be. And uh, yeah, it just wouldn't save. I tried restarting the mounted computer three times and uh, plugging things in and out, and it still didn't work. So maybe I have to do some driver updates or something, um, but yeah. Anyways, uh, it's not a complete waste of the night. Thankfully, I was able to just uh, point my telescope towards the core of the Milky Way, uh, just some random location. Uh, actually, it's close to Cassiopeia, so I'm gonna look it up and see what it actually is. Um, but yeah, I found a nebula that I was able to capture with my Raza, and I'm starting to take some subs on it. So uh, I'm excited to see what it is and uh, find out. Maybe it's something I shot before, maybe it's not. It's, uh, it's about 12.30 right now, which means that I've spent a lot of my time that I could have used uh, capturing subs, uh, but again, I had the issues with the mount. So uh, I might just stick with this object tonight and uh, see what I can do. Um, I'm going to play around with the telescope tomorrow morning when there's more light and uh, see if I can you know, fix it somehow um, by doing driver updates and whatnot. And I might have another opportunity tomorrow to get the telescope out and shoot. Um, that's the hope at least, but uh, again, it's not a complete waste of the night. I am shooting something, um, but we'll find out what that is soon enough. All right, so I've taken three frames already, and uh, I'm gonna do a bit of stretching to see this object. Um, again, I'm, I'm streaming my PC with TeamViewer, so you're not getting the best of quality here, um, but the data being recorded on the rig is top notch. Um, but yeah, it looks like I have a nebula here. It could be the Pac-Man nebula. It also could be, um, actually, let's find out. Uh, let's open up Stellarium and look at where the Milky Way is close to Cassiopeia. We'll check out the nebulas that are there and see if uh, it looks anything like uh, what my subs look like. All right, so I should be shooting towards this section of the sky. I was trying to use the stars in Cassiopeia to do my star alignment, but that completely failed. So uh, yeah, I know the telescope is in this general direction, but let's find out which nebula it could be on. So I don't think I've got the heart or soul nebula because those objects take up a lot more of my frame in the Raza 8 inch telescope. Uh, it is a smaller nebula that I'm seeing, so let's take a look and see what else we have. Yeah, it could be the Pac-Man Nebula. It's very possible. Uh, what else is this? Not sure what that nebula is called. Don't think it's that one. And it's definitely not that, that's too big. Yeah, I really do think it's the Pac-Man Nebula. Uh, it's crazy that I wasn't able to do a star alignment properly, but I was able to point the telescope anywhere in the Milky Way and uh, eventually I found a nebula. Um, to do that, I brought my gain up to 300, and I was using eight second exposures, and then just you know panning the sky for a couple minutes or so, and uh, then I was able to find this nebula. So, as I said earlier, I'm gonna capture a lot of frames on this. PhD2 guiding and everything else is ready to go at this point, so let's sit back, relax, and uh, capture some good data on whatever this is. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 